Here is an out of context list of some of the most insane things to happen in Grappler Baki. Barack Obama, Donald Trump, and Hillary Clinton are all canonical characters in this universe. Baki, in an attempt to grow stronger, manifests in shadow boxes with a gargantuan praying mantis, oh yeah, and later a T-Rex. As a young man, Baki fights and then befriends a giant two meter tall simian ape. Baki, in his quest for strength to defeat his father, has one of the biggest power-ups in the entire series after having sex for the first time. Baki's romantic rival of the show is none other than Muhammad Ali's son, and in these scenes, Baki Baki literally melts, turning to liquid. Finally, from the newest season of Netflix's Baki Hanma, Baki faces off against a nearly 200 million old superhuman Neanderthal named Pickle, and if he loses, he gets eaten. The story of Baki Hanma is relatively simple as far as anime goes. Baki is a young fighting prodigy who constantly looks to grow his strength and skill so he can defeat his father, Yujiro Hanma, known as the strongest creature on Earth. To put this in context, in the world of Grappler Baki, Yujiro is so strong it is said he was able to defeat the entire American military by himself during the Vietnam War. Grappler Baki the manga debuted in 1991 and is still going on strong today at a total of 147 volumes, along with receiving several anime adaptions, first a 1994 OVA, then a 24 episode anime series over the maximum tournament arc, and finally and more recently a number of Netflix seasons and adaptations covering a, a variety of different arcs, first the most evil death row convict arc, the great Chinese challenge arc, the great prison battle saga, and finally and most recently released the Pickle Wars saga. If you can't tell already, this manga in anime is wacky, weird, and wild. And I freaking love it. You see, in order to understand the absurdity that is Grappler Baki, we need to take a look at the man himself who created it. Keisuke Itagaki is a little different from maybe your more traditional manga artist, which we can see from his works prior to Baki. One, a short manga series about a makeup artist, the other, a short series about a character whose main talent, his special ability, is apologizing. Already we can see that Itagaki has no problem playing outside the kind of normal bounds of maybe traditional manga in anime, and this begins to make even more sense when we learn later on that his daughter would go on to be the author of Beastars. Besides having a furry for a daughter, what is probably most influential to Itagaki, which we see in his work, is his lifelong love of martial arts. Itagaki in many ways breaks the mold and expectations of what a manga artist is. A practitioner of Kempo from a young age, Itagaki prior to becoming a manga artist would serve five years in the Japanese Defense Force. Here he continued his martial arts growth, competing and training in boxing. To this day he continues to explore and train under a variety of martial arts, and you see it's with each and every scene in Baki we begin to see Itagaki's love of combat sports sports come to life. This is really one of the main things that I love about manga and anime. It's one creator's unfiltered, unfettered version, vision of a concept, of an idea. Whether it's an anime like Blue Lock that shows the intricacies and minutia of a sport like soccer, or a story like Dr. Stone, which breaks down complicated scientific processes in one of the most fun and jovial ways I've ever seen, this to me is one of the great powers of manga in anime, the way it can be used to channel a person's love and an interest and even times obsession over a certain topic. And that topic in Baki is, well, fighting. In the words of one of my favorite creators on the YouTube platform, the most famous of all One-Eyed Wolves, if Dragon Ball Z was a story about a group of characters that really love to fight, then Baki is a series about a group of characters fighting for fighting's sake. There is no other plot device in Grappler Baki besides a character's pursuit of strength and ultimately a fight. But it really all works due to the character's love for combat sports and fighting itself, which are really all just extensions of Itagaki as a person. You see, one does not simply do karate in Grappler Baki. No, karate and other martial arts are presented as a way of life a creed even, a thing that defines a person on who they are to their very core. So then we must ask ourselves, what would happen if two of these fighters, two fighters who believe in themselves and their martial arts, 
happen to cross paths with one another. This is the driving point of Baki as a series, and really the entire premise behind the newest season of Baki, where our mini fighters test their hard earned martial arts skills against the strongest creature alive, a 200 million year old human who was found frozen in a block of ice. Now, yes, this sounds ridiculous, but in the world of Baki, this is really the par for the course. Grab for Baki is insane, it's over the top. Really, it's just downright silly at times, yet somehow it doesn't seem to impact on the actual seriousness of the story. Yes, there are many absolutely absurd moments throughout the series, but somehow the insanity in Grappler Baki, I can't help but describe as grounded. Much of this ridiculousness can be seen in the way Itadaki draws characters, these uber-vascular, hulkishly freakish units of muscle. This is usually the first odd thing that people take away from Grappler Baki and causes many to just wonder why. You see though, if we look at Itagaki's fight scenes, there is obvious evidence that Itagaki has a full understanding on the concepts being applied here, but he is choosing on purpose to act if we fuck with them. If we take a peek throughout of any Itagaki's characters, we see an in-depth, although exaggerated, understanding of the human anatomy, combined with a really exquisite eye for detail and movement, which really makes sense, as Itagaki's main concern for Grappler Baki is displaying characters' weight, speed, and power. A character does not simply throw a punch or a kick in Grappler Baki. Through Itagaki's work, we see the entire weight and body mechanics that go into to the movement, albeit in an uh, sometimes grotesque fashion. Itagaki has such a beautiful way of showing movement throughout his illustrations, something the anime captures incredibly well, but it's really more profound and expressive within the panels of the manga. Remember in a story like Baki, where fighting is the main driver of the plot, conveying a character's speed and power are the most important things for immersing us into the fight scene, into the story, for making us believe that these characters are in fact dangerous and that any fight could mean death. Itagaki's mastery of movement is so great that oftentimes he doesn't even need to illustrate the actual limbs being used to make a strike. The lack of detail conveys really just how fast the movement is meant to be. Is that what you're doing? For a battle anime series about fighters fighting for fighting's sake, you can imagine that, well, fighting is extremely important. If a major fight scene isn't taking place in this story, then you can best believe that one is being built towards. And Itagaki does these fight builds in his same usual ridiculous and over-the-top fashion. When two characters clash in Grappler Baki, it's so much more than just a fight. There's a gravity to everything that is being carefully crafted by him the entire time. Now, if you're a fan of combat sports, then you know how important the buildup is to a fight. This is true whether it's MMA, boxing, or pro wrestling even. In the combat sports world, the buildup is where the fighters really sell the fight to the fans. Oftentimes, by pushing a storyline or an angle, Sometimes this can be something really as simple as a clash of styles, the wrestler versus the striker. Sometimes it's just something personal, like a personal beef or vendetta. Other times, we just want to see a cocky loudmouth get shut up. When things are all said and done, the buildup is there to make you care. It's there to make you desperate to see what's going to happen next. What we are watching right now came from a UFC face-off years ago between Jon Jones and Daniel Cormier, two extremely talented men and legends in the world of MMA. At this time, the two were getting ready to fight in a massive championship fight. The prospect of this fight alone was enough to give it pretty major hype. On one side, you had Daniel Cormier, a world-class wrestler and grappler with well-coached stand-up that at the time was 15-0, and now found himself in a fight for the UFC light heavyweight title. Across from him stood the young, cocky visage of John Jones, a tall, lengthy, world-class grappler and chokeout artist with devastating striking, able to combine a whole array of kicks, punches, knees, and elbows, Jones was the youngest UFC champion ever, and was currently enjoying a dominant streak than likes the UFC rarely sees. At this time, he had defended his title seven consecutive times over a three-year period, cementing him as one of the greats this early on in his career. It's safe to say the prospect of these two talented and dangerous men fighting each other alone was enough to sell tickets. But you see, well then this happened.
As I said earlier, the most recent season of Baki Hanma on Netflix revolves around the introduction of one of the most insane characters in all of Baki, Pickle, a Neanderthal who was frozen in ice for over a hundred million plus years, and is now unfrozen and possibly the most strongest of all life forms on our planet. Of course, our cast of characters in Baki, being complete psychos, all want to test their might against this new mighty foe. But the character that we are going to be talking about today is this guy. Katsumi Erochi, a high-level black belt karate fighter considered a prodigy at the age of 21. Katsumi runs the famous Shinshin Kai Karate Dojo with his legendary father and black belt Dopo Erochi, known as the God of War. Katsumi, along with his father and other world-class fighters, including Baki's own dad, have all gathered in order to meet their new rival, Pickle. Here is where Yujiro completely shatters the young Katsume's mind, telling the karate prodigy that no one likes him or even wants to be around him. He just shows up to a fight without any plan, knowing that if he loses, he will always get help, but he continues to put on a brave show for his father, knowing he can always count on getting helped and getting bailed out or rescued. Yujiro saw right through the young karate fighter, whose ego, now broken, responded exactly how you think he might only to be completely embarrassed as the camera pans down to Katsume's shoe with his laces removed. The young prodigy had been completely outclassed and embarrassed, and he would not forget. What's worse is that he knew Yujiro was right. Katsumi, while a talented fighter, still felt he was living in the shadows of his legendary father. The only way he believed he could prove his worth is by fighting him. To make things worse, one of the most legendary karate fighters had already fallen to the might of Pickle. Retsu, who after putting up a valiant effort against Pickle, had, um, his entire leg ate by the Neanderthal. Katsume not only wants to prove himself to his father and to everyone, but like all characters in Baki, he wants to test himself and his karate. Irregardless, if he loses or even dies, he wants to try. Here, Katsume, with some help from Matsuretsui and another legendary master, Kaku, learns a legendary technique, the Mach Punch. Basically, the fighter's movement becomes so fast and loose, they move almost like a whip, breaking the sound barrier upon impact. Apparently, this is done through an imagination and visualization. No, literally, you imagine you have more joints in your body structure, thus, I guess, allowing it to move faster. The only problem is you don't actually have hundreds of joints like that in your body. So while you get the speed and impact of the mock strike, it comes at, well, a brutal cost. As Katsume enters the stadium to face off against Pickle, he is met by the sounds of 55,000 voices in unison. These are the members of his karate dojo, as all of them let out a mighty battle cry in support of their young leader, who we have learned is worried about his ability to run and lead his father's dojo. This is just really one of those scenes that hit so much better in the anime than in the manga. The combination of the music with the voice acting is just, mwah, it's just so good. It's just one of those moments in anime that just give you goosebumps. Katsumi unleashes his devastating new technique upon Pickle, his mock speed strike with destructive repercussions. The young prodigy had done it. No other fighter had brought Pickle to his knees, but he had done it. With the mock punch, he had become the strongest karate master in 500 years at only 21 years old. The problem, however, was the impact on his body of the air pressure breaking the sound barrier. I'm not joking, this is actually the full takedown and reason they gave in the manga for how this happened. What happens in the rest of this fight scene is absolutely crazy and really just classic Baki insanity. I mean, they literally invoke Jesus Christ in this episode. But if you want to find out what happens to Katsumi uh, in the rest of this fight, you'll have to go check it out yourself. As I've said repeatedly in a lot of my anime videos, the reasons that I love this medium is the level of detail and personality that one person can put into a story. They can really devote themselves and what they love into a story and craft it into something bigger. Manga in many ways is an intimate affair. No, not like that. What I mean is that manga it feels so much more personal than like really any other form of media. This is usually because it is made by one person. It's one person's unfettered work and vision. 
You see the love that Itagaki has for fighting and for martial arts in the pages and illustrations of Baki. Throughout all of the insane muscle and mind-bending techniques, you can see the level of love, detail, and accuracy within Baki. Really a level of accuracy that can only be done by someone who truly loves martial arts. Baki Hanma is the story of characters who live to fight one another written by a man with a love and obsession for fighting, wanting to share that love with the rest of the world. And when you think about it like that, all of the absurdity and the insanity of Grappler Baki really starts to make sense. As always guys, thank you so much for watching my video. If you did enjoy the video, learn something new, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel more, then please consider watching without ad block and sharing the video. As always, I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe out there. Until next time, peace, love, adu.